Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Let's take a look at what we got going on today. I hope you guys have had a good week. It's been pretty busy here at TFNN and some of the other companies we have. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been nice, but I'm glad to kind of take the end of the day out here and, and be with you guys. So let's take a look at what we got going on. We're finally up over that 4,800 level again, uh, at least in the ES Mini. Uh, we were talking a little bit uh, maybe last week about how there might be a consolidation kind of forming here. Uh, obviously, a lot of pricing had to kind of come about with talks of lowering interest rates. Uh, we might see a higher CPI this month. Of course, inflation is not linear, so uh, that might be expected. Um, but it just kind of brings up the question of, of how long does this get pushed out? And by this, I, I mean rate decreases. You had the European Central Bank come out earlier as well and said that they don't necessarily see rate cuts this year. Now, different animals, right, U.S. versus Europe. Uh, but, you know, you can kind of get indications of, of what the general economic health of the world is, kind of looking at what these other central banks are talking about. So trading right now in the ES Mini, at least at 4804. Let's take a look at the Russell down at 1931.60, 60 cents, up about 0.34% today. Uh, the NQ is trading about 1.37%. YM, it's the Dow Futures, up about 0.4%. Gold contract, up about 0.82%. We're trading at 2022 currently in there. Silver as well, trading up almost a full percent. Uh, we're trading at 2287 in silver. Of course, we've had quite the come down since about the beginning of December last year. Copper is up, but we're still on that downward swing again, trading about $3.75. Of course, I would love to see it go a little bit back closer to $4. Got crude oil futures trading at $73.89, up almost 2%. We'll talk a little bit about that. We have a lot of things going on. Uh, of course, the cold puts higher demand uh, on energy prices. Uh, you're seeing an increase at the gas, uh, excuse me, at the pump regarding gas prices. Some of the oil pipelines in South Dakota, it's so cold that they're shutting down and actually starting to spill oil. Uh, however, America is we're really producing oil again, really producing energy, natural gas. Uh, we saw that a lot maybe around, you know, 2017, 2019. Uh, we had just, I think, the largest output um, in, in by, by quite a large lead as well. That came down a little bit. Uh, of course, there were some discussions, I would say, maybe a few years ago, uh, some of the oil rigs were being shut down, not as many permits were getting out, but uh, the oil rigs that are up currently are uh, producing at a high, uh, much higher rate, which is a positive. Um, but as it stands now with all the weather going on uh, and issues with the blockade in the Red Sea, uh, Libya still persists, and then some kind of weird political posturing, uh, namely from Saudi Arabia, and then, and then of course, the embargo on Russian oil. Uh, we're going to kind of see this move up a little bit through this season. Uh, the bonds are down, means the rates are going higher. These guys are getting uh, pretty hit currently. Take a look at Tesla. These guys continue um, a downward trajectory, right? You had them trading about maybe 265, and we're heading now right to about 211. Uh, you kept seeing day after day, down 3%, down 2%, down 5%. Uh, there's some issues that t Elon Musk has also brought up. Um, he wants to expand Tesla kind of construction away from cars. He's still going to focus on cars, but he wants to go more into AI and uh, robotics. And we'll talk a little bit about that. He wants more shares in the company uh, to have kind of higher voting power. And it kind of remains to be seen if, if that's going to really take off for him. Still Dynamics, we are trading at... 11271. The dollar still strong at 10351. And, and this isn't even like a consolidation kind of move. I mean, this is an upward movement uh, in the dollar. Of course, looking at this initially, you could have seen a counter trend bounce, but it, it really has this staying power now that we see kind of this jump from this 10250 level all the way up to 10351. Uh, again, this. I, I think adds to the theory that we might be seeing a basically a consolidation uh, in the S&P 500. We're going to have Tim Ord on a little bit later, and he's going to give us his fantastic analysis of what's going on in the market as well, uh, on top of, I believe, gold. And uh, we'll see what else he has in store for us. Google at 145.29. Meta, 375.62. Disney back up 2% today, 92.17. Apple, they got a better rating. Um, 
from Bank of America earlier today, and this really shot up the uh, the, the price of the equity. We're trading about 347 currently. Um, that's a nice uh, little gap up. Of course, not on uh, any significant volume, uh, but it's a better position to have, at least optics-wise, uh, that you got a, uh, a buy signal, at least from Bank of America. Lucid just down more again today, 5.22%. Take a look here, the banks kind of had a little sell-off. I wanted to look a little bit, uh, we only have two minutes left in this segment, um, but this is gonna be Invesco. These are essentially the Bitcoin ETFs, right? So we finally got them on Thinkorswim. Uh, I'll take some more look into that. Plug, they were doing the hydrogen cells, uh, did not work. Uh, their quarterly earnings were less than stellar, or anticipated to be, excuse me. And we're trading down about 12.07, and then Humera actually down about 8.33%, and we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, excuse me, Humana. Uh, Humana reported the preliminary 2023 fourth quarter numbers, 91.4% medical loss ratio compared to an 89.5% expected. That's ahead of its fourth quarter earnings on Jan 25th. Uh, medical loss ratio is the delta. That's the change of medical premiums and insurer collects and the amount paid out its claims. The Affordable Care Act mandates that companies have an MLR of at least 80 to 85% each year. The report from Humana is pressuring its stock and other Medicare Advantage insurers, including CVS and United Healthcare, uh, which have yet to report earnings. Uh, healthcare sector specialists said in a note on Thursday that Humana's numbers are extending a post-pandemic trend that may uh, that many expected uh, would have waned by now. This is the most significant negative variance we can recall, and speaks to the still higher than usual healthcare utilization environment, uh, particularly among the older populations. And we're seeing this come out too, a uh, lot more Ill, uh, excuse me, illnesses with younger people. Uh, talk about maybe at the end of the show, if I have time, uh, that the increase in cancer rates among younger people uh, has gone up exponentially, uh, which I think is at least something worth kind of talking about. And uh, kind of some certain ways, at least using AI, that this might be detectable. Maybe we can bring down some costs with that. Uh, so stay tuned right there. We have some more coming for you. I think we have Tim Ord on about 3.20. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Stay tuned.